Welcome to these Easter Reflections. And we will look at the Passover story and see what has that to do with Easter celebrations. I will read from the book of Exodus chapter 12. I would have loved to, lay, to read all of it, but I will read verses 29 and 30. Then I will skip to read verses 50 and 51. Exodus chapter 12, 29 and 30, then 50 and 51. So Exodus chapter 12, verses 29 and 30. Now at midnight, the Lord struck every firstborn male in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon and every firstborn of the livestock. During the night, Pharaoh got up. He along with all his officials and all the Egyptians and there was a loud wailing throughout Egypt because there wasn't a house without someone dead. Verses 50 then all the Israelites did this. They did just as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron. On that same day, the Lord brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt according to their divisions. Let us pray. Lord, we ask you to guide us as we think through this Passover story in light of Easter. Please open the eyes of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First of all, God is a faithful God. Not even one word of all of his promises fails. All of them come to pass. You know, God had promised that Abraham's descendants would be slaves in a foreign land for four hundred good years. But also, God will bring judgment on the nation that enslaves them, and God's people will come out with great possession. That we are told in Genesis chapter 15, verses 13 to 15. Secondly, God is just, meaning that he'll never, ever, ever let any sin go unpunished. It is man who is sinful, and every sin deserves God's judgment and punishment. Both the Israelites, who are God's people in this case, and the nation enslaving them are sinful, and both deserve God's punishment. Just like God's word reminds us in the book of Romans chapter 3 that not even one is righteous. All have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. I mean all. And so even now, as we think through Easter celebrations, that needs not to depart from our hearts. And it is the same even with the Passover story that we are looking at now. In the Passover story, we are going to see that God rescues his people from his judgment through the blood of a substitute. God rescues his people from his judgment through the blood of a substitute. And let us get started. And we look at it in two main points. First, God rescues his people by judging Pharaoh and the enemy nation. God rescues his people by judging Pharaoh and the enemy nation. And secondly, God rescues his people through the blood of a substitute. God rescues his people through the blood of a substitute. So, the first one, God rescues his people by judging Pharaoh, the enemy nation. So far, Pharaoh and the entire Egypt have experienced God's judgment nine times by experiencing the well-known to us plagues. Can you imagine all water bodies turning into blood in the whole of your country? Can you imagine of lies everywhere? Can you imagine of a darkness that you can feel everywhere? 
And can you imagine having boils all over your body and it's everybody in your country? Can you imagine all that happening one after another? And still, the leader of your country is not ready to give up, to surrender, so that these troubles should come to a stop. This is because God, who is in charge of all and everything, happens to have hardened Pharaoh's heart. Now, there is a tenth plague awaiting. And in all those, including the tenth one, God is rescuing his people. Like he had promised Abraham in Genesis chapter 15. He is doing so by judging Pharaoh and all the Egyptians through the plagues. And here is a tenth one that Pharaoh doesn't recover from it, however much he tries, which is death of all the Egyptians' firstborn sons. God judges Pharaoh by killing his firstborn son and every other firstborn son of every Egyptian. Can you imagine the degree of mourning at that particular time in Egypt? Death in every home. And it reads in verses 30, And there was a loud wailing throughout Egypt because there wasn't a house without someone dead. It almost sounds like there is no one else to come mourn with another because everyone is affected. God's judgment truly affects all who are his enemies. At least all the other plagues were reversible, meaning that whatever happened, it later resumed to normal. But for this particular tenth one, it was death, and this was irreversible. The dead never came back to life. The Egyptians could not escape God's judgment. Pharaoh could not hold God's people any longer. At some point, he had to mourn his son. He had to let God's people go so that they would go worship God in freedom. God rescued his people. He did so by judging Pharaoh and judging the enemy nation by killing all the firstborn sons. It was a painful cry for all the Egyptians who were hard on God's people, whipping them and forcing labor over them. They were cruel to God's people, and God chose to judge them in this particular way. Secondly, God rescues his people through the blood of a substitute. God rescues his people through the blood of a substitute. At first, it was God rescuing his people by changing Pharaoh and the enemy nation. But now, it's God rescuing his people through the blood of of a substitute. Not that God's people, the Israelites, had the right to be rescued. Not at all. They never deserved God's rescue. If anything, they deserved God's judgment too. Them too kept complaining and also did not believe in God who keeps his promises. They cursed and complained to Moses when Pharaoh multiplied their work. They blamed Moses, who had nothing to do with that. Even Moses himself had killed an Egyptian and ran away from Pharaoh. Everyone deserved God's judgment. Pharaoh and the Egyptians, the Israelites, and even Moses, their leader, deserved God's judgment. But God chose to rescue his people still, though they deserved his judgment. And how did he choose to rescue his people? He chose to rescue them through the blood of a substitute. God's people needed to follow the instructions given to them by God through Moses about the Passover. They were to slaughter a male one-year-old lamb that is without blemish. They were to kill it and use its blood to smear on their door frames where they lived. They were to do this to keep the angel of death from killing their firstborn sons too. The angel found blood smeared on their door frames. He passed over and spared their firstborn sons. That's the reason it's called Passover. Anyway, you know what that means? It means that if any Israelite 
failed to follow those instructions and failed to kill the lamb and smear its blood on their door frame, their firstborn sons too would die just like those of the Egyptians. It means if any of the Egyptians would have followed those instructions as well and killed a lamb and smeared its blood on their door frame, God would have spared them as well. There was nothing special about the Israelites. And one thing that is for sure, blood had to be shed in Egypt on that Passover night. Whether it was through a firstborn son dying in that home or a lamb being killed in that home, in the place of a firstborn son death. Another important thing is that God's people were to celebrate this particular event in the years that followed, just to remember how God rescued them by judging Pharaoh and the Egyptians, and from God's judgment through the blood of a substitute lamb. Now, how is this Passover story important to us even as we continue to think about the death and resurrection of Jesus during this Easter period? One, we too have been rescued from slavery through the judgment of God's enemies. We too have been rescued from slavery through the judgment of God's enemies. Naturally, we humans are slaves to sin and to the ways of the devil himself. Just like the Israelites were slaves in Egypt, Sin and the devil are the twin enemies of God today. It is at the cross that Jesus died. It is at Calvary that his blood is shed. And through that, sin was defeated. Through that, he conquered the devil when he rose again. Just like those who follow the instructions given by God through Moses and killed a lamb, those who trust in Jesus have been delivered from the domain of darkness and transferred into the kingdom of God's beloved son. And now they are no longer slaves to sin. Even though we often sin, sin is no longer our master and need never fear the evil one again. We now belong to Jesus. We are not to return to the old ways of sin, but instead we are to live by the Spirit, putting to death the misdeeds of the body, pursuing godliness and cultivating the fruit of the Spirit. Easter, like Passover, is about conquering the enemy. It's about defeating slavery. It's about being rescued from slavery. It's about God judging his enemies. His enemies, in our case today, are those who have not trusted in Jesus. A day will come when they will experience something worse than death of their firstborn sons. They will die eternally. They will burn in hell eternally. They will face God's wrath eternally just because of not trusting in Jesus. Number two, we too have been rescued from judgment through the death of a substitute. We too have been rescued from judgment through the death of a substitute. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The Passover is a shadow of some real thing. The Passover is fulfilled in the death of Jesus. Jesus shed his blood as a lamb without blemish in order to redeem his people from both judgment and future living. As a result, he will be forever praised by his people as the lamb who was slain. We too are to remember the rescue accomplished by the death of the Passover lamb, like the way God's people remembered how God rescued them from Egypt. We do so, says Jesus, every time we take the bread and the wine at the Lord's Supper. We are not special. Or rather, there is nothing that we have done not to deserve God's wrath eternally. We were God's enemies and we deserved his judgment. Only that God has shown us mercy through his son Jesus, the substitute lamb. Just like the Israelites had a lamb as a substitute not to have their firstborn sons killed, we have Jesus, the lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus is the one who died in our place to rescue us from his judgment. Isn't that beautiful?
That's what Easter, like Passover, is all about. We have been rescued from slavery to sin and from God's judgment. And so, we should pursue godliness and treasure the cross. God has rescued his people from his judgment through the blood of a substitute. And in our case, the substitute is Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Help us that we may be transformed of our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.